This is the Soulfully Casual Podcast hosted by Matty Ice. And now, your host, Matty Ice. Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Soulfully Casual Podcast with Matty Ice. And as always, I'm your host, Matty Ice. Um, another week, another set of episodes for you all. It's uh, great to be continuing to do this. Um, to any listeners, old and new, thank you, uh, and welcome to the show once again. Uh, your support is is definitely not um, de- definitely not taken for granted. I just wanted to put a shout out to some new places that have listened to the show in the past month. Um, for those of you listening in Belgium, uh, in Ireland, thank you. Your international presence uh, does not go unnoticed. It's actually pretty awesome, especially since I'm uh, of Irish descent myself. And also in the States, uh, we've had some listeners from Michigan and Texas listen in, and that's a first. So really awesome to have everybody uh, continue to push the show. I'd love to see as many states and countries as possible. Uh, Another thing, connection is really important to the show, as I've always said. So there's three ways to do that, and that's email, soulfully.casual at gmail.com, Instagram, the Soulfully Casual podcast, and Twitter, at Soulfully Casual. So Last week was kind of a tough week for um, the sport of baseball. Uh, for those of you who, who do not know, um, Hank Aaron passed away. And if you're not a baseball fan, you may know that name. You may not know that name. Um, but over the last year plus, you know, baseball's lost a lot of legends. There have been many, many folks who have, who have passed away, and a lot of them from, uh, you know, the much o- older generations, at least older than, than me. Um, obviously as somebody who loves baseball, I know who they are, but, uh, not all of them, I don't think have had the sort of national presence as, as Hank Aaron. And while all the players have meant something to the game, um, really they mean more to the communities, uh, and for the teams in which they played. But Hank Aaron had a little bit of a different vibe to him. Um, you know, ha- having held the records that he held, um, you know, and, and done some other things. I think a lot more people knew who he was, at least a lot more baseball fans knew who he was. And thinking about baseball got me to thinking about myself a little bit. The sport of baseball has been around for a long, long time. And for many, many years, it it had been called America's pastime. And it's really been one of my favorite sports since I was a kid. You know, I grew up playing it. I grew up watching it. And really, you know, when I think about my childhood, so many memories come back uh, baseball. But definitely one thing that comes to mind is my father when it comes to baseball. Um, we connected over the sport of baseball throughout my entire childhood, really, and almost my entire life uh, outside of the last couple of years only because baseball has changed and um, the landscape of sports has changed. But, you know, every summer, uh, my father would take me to a multitude of baseball games, mostly minor league games. Um, for those new listeners to the show, I grew up in a small town called Bristol, Rhode Island. And so I grew up in the New England region my whole life. And that means that I'm a New England sports fan. And most people identify with New England sports these days as a winning area. But for the most part, at least in my childhood, it wasn't. But we used to go to a couple of Boston Red Sox games per year. My dad actually had a friend in his office that he worked in who had season tickets and he would buy uh, tickets off of them, and they were usually for the games that were, you know, against the teams that were least liked. But one year, I think it was my 16th birthday, he got me tickets to see uh, the Atlanta Braves play the Red Sox at Fenway Park, and that was awesome because that was probably the best team that I had seen play, play you know, play there. And that's when they had guys like Greg Maddox, Tom Glavin, you know, those guys. So it was really cool. Um, but he used to take me to a lot of minor league games. The Pawtucket Red Sox were in Rhode Island, and we used to go for so cheap. It was like 5 or $6, uh, and we would sit all over the place. But, you know, we, we just had a good time with it. Uh, my father also was heavily involved when I played Little League. Uh, he was a coach, and he used to coach me at home. I mean, I, it's funny, you know, thinking about, uh, you know, parenting, as I talked to in an episode last week, one of the things I realized in between publishing that and, and today is just how many things you start to think about as you get older, and especially people who have had healthy relationships with their parents. And I recognize that many people have had some dysfunctional relationship with parents, and I myself have at times. But when I think about my childhood, so many 
things go back to my father and so many things go back to baseball. Playing catch in the front yard, uh, teaching me how to swing a bat, teaching me how to hold a bat, teaching me how to throw, uh, you know, showing so much patience when I was really young. Uh, playing wiffle ball with me and he used to beat the crap out of me playing wiffle ball because I used to pitch to him and he used to obviously be able to hit much farther than I could and we lived in a neighborhood in which our yard sort of sloped down um, into another person's yard but they had a fence up and the fence was much lower than where my father would be hitting so a lot of times I had to go and you know knock on the door and say hey you know our baseball fell back into your yard and it became kind of a funny thing but baseball was really a common theme Throughout my Red Sox fandom, I kind of started to understand as I got older and into college, you know, what it meant to not just my father, but the region in general. And in 2004, when the Red Sox, quote unquote, broke the curse, I really uh, got a much deeper understanding of what the game and that team had meant to my father uh, and the generations of my family that had passed on already. My grandfather passed away from pancreatic cancer in 2002, and he didn't get to see the Red Sox win a championship. And it was his favorite team. It was something he'd always wanted to see. And so knowing how many people knew somebody who had always wanted to see that and, and knew somebody you know, who never got to see it, those moments became very personal. They became an indelible you know, part of my life and so much identify with who I am and where I came from because I think that's really important. I just remember receiving messages from people, uh, family members, friends, and all, everybody had somebody that they thought about, that they remembered. My father was one of them. You know, I talked to my father that night and he was emotional because he thought about his dad who passed away in 1993, well before that. You know, my 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 mom, my, my, my grandfather, like his grandparents, like all those people that didn't get to see this or had been through all the heartache that they had seen from that team when they'd come so close and yet were so far. Um, but I understood it. But when I think about baseball, it's like I think about the sights, the sounds, the big moments over the years that have left an impression on me. There's something about the murmur of a crowd in baseball in between, you know, when there's a hit or a home run or, or something exciting. And it's just, it's comforting. That sound of people talking, uh, milling about is just very comforting. And it's really something that I think about when I think of summer. At the dog days of summer, I think about the crack of the bat, uh, the hit of the mitt, things like that. But when I was a kid, my dad and I watched Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa chase the single season home run record, which captured America. And it was right after baseball had gone through a strike. And it was really in trouble. They really were struggling to get fans because people had grown tired of the squabbling of you know, multi-million, I mean, excuse me, multi-millionaire athletes and, and their demands. But that summer, those two really captured it. And I remember watching the moment that Mark McGuire broke that record with my father. It was appointment television. And one of the cool things was he used to let me stay up well past my bedtime, even when I was young, to see something that he knew I would always remember. And I think about the Mark McGuire moment. I think about Cal Ripken breaking the Iron Man record, and he let me stay up for that. Um, Ted Williams in the 1999 All-Star Game. But those were things that I always remember. I mean, I also remember he used to talk to me about players that he watched, players that he idolized growing up, about players of the past, and even just how different the times were in in the past. You know, baseball has gone through so many wars, so many different eras in how long it's been, you know, part of the fabric of this country. And so many things have changed since then. I mean, even even just since the last 20 years, you know, in this century, things have changed. But he used to talk to me about those things. He used to talk to me about going to Fenway Park when he was younger because you could sit in the bleachers, bleachers for like a dollar at Fenway Park. Being at Ted Williams' last game, you know, getting to see him play live was, you know, a thrill for him and and just all of those all of those things. So like those memories that he had from childhood transferred to me because he made those same memories for me. And I hope that when I get older, even though I don't live in that region anymore, you know, I'd love my son to be able to have a passion for something like that. You know, remember me for taking him to baseball games, you know, going to events like that and having those indelible memories that are associated with not just things, but feelings. And that's what baseball does for me. And I think that 
you know, he used to talk about the players of old because, you know, those there was a bunch of players from, you know, the World War II days who they were so different than players now. I mean, the 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 dynamic and the demographics of baseball are so much different where so many foreign players are now a part of, you know, the rosters in baseball and so you don't have the same uh, you know, Americanized or, or you know, solely American rosters the way that you did well back into the, you know, World War II days, but so many of those great players back then sacrificed not just for their families but for their country and i always think about ted williams because that was my father's favorite player and kind of mine too even though obviously he's well past uh you know my my life and in terms of his playing days i was nowhere near born when he retired but i just remember thinking about how he lost four years of his career to serve this country in world war ii and how many players did that back then it was just something that they did the sacrifice for their country was more um, than you know their their careers and their livelihoods and there's something to be say something to say about that excuse me that kind of sacrifice you don't really see too much today a lot of these players you know you hear about entitlement you hear about not doing things for charity and the amount of money that they're making compared to what they were making back then is is nothing and we've had our own struggles as a country throughout all that you know uh, two Iraq wars and it's not as if any players have voluntarily come out and said, yeah, I'm going to go serve our country. And Ted Williams did that. But then that got me to thinking about Hank Aaron because that's who, you know, has, has passed away recently. And I, Hank Aaron served his country in more ways than just necessarily, um, you know, through fighting a war. He did fight a war, but he was fighting racism in a lot of ways. Uh, in 1974, Hank Aaron was poised to break the all-time career home run record. Uh, for those listeners who are not familiar with baseball, uh, that record was held by Babe Ruth, who is probably the m- most famous baseball player of all time. Uh, Babe Ruth was doing things in baseball well before anybody was ever doing them. The amount of home runs he was hitting uh, when he was in his prime, he was hitting more home runs than most teams in the league. The game was just much different. He was much different. And that left a mark on baseball because the records that he basically created he didn't really break them he created them and that one of 755 home runs um was always so sacred because it was held by him um you know and it's it's even the same i believe you know when roger maris broke the single season record the first time um you know there was a lot of hatred thrown toward him because he was breaking babe ruth's record and babe ruth is sacred not just in the city of new york but just in baseball in general so as Hank Aaron was, you know, coming closer and closer, he was battling a lot of different things that is not very different from what is seen today, honestly. And racism, death threats, um, you know, name calling when he would go to stadiums. I mean, those things he faced on a daily basis, even in his hometown, because people didn't want or didn't like the idea of a black man breaking a quote unquote white man's record. And think about that for a minute. Think about if you are coming up on something in your profession, in your job, and you feel like it's an accomplishment that you have earned right, you know, rightfully by based off merit, based off of your talents. And think about getting that kind of hate, death threats, threats against your family as you're coming up to it. It can't have felt very good. And it just shows you that even though we have made so many strides, um, you know, throughout the years, back then things were much, much different. And he faced so much, so much to the point that um, I, I can't remember the, the newspaper, but the editor had them write an obituary for Hank Aaron because they were so sure that he was going to be assassinated for breaking this record. But what that really started for him after his playing days was he became a champion for social justice, a champion for race, and really a champion for baseball. I mean, when they talk about, usually they talk about the old players. So many of them are considered ambassadors of the game. And, you know, think about it. There's so many professions that come and go, and we don't really have anybody who sort of stays behind and becomes an ambassador, you know, like not in this particular way. And Hank Aaron was always seen as a better human being than a better baseball player. And to me, that kind of a legacy is what I want, right? That's the kind of legacy that I hope for. Um, you know, so, so many times people are striving for the next best thing, the, you know, the next best job, the next best, uh, salary, 
you know, the next best iPhone, whatever it is. And those things are important in the moment. You know, we obviously need money. We need, um, you know, technology to to survive, to exist, and to, to continue to move forward. But at the end of the day, and I've had this conversation with a few people about what's value, you know, what, what is consisting of value. And to me, va value is my time. My time is the most valuable thing. And when people say, well, money's really valuable because you need it to survive, I always ask, when you're on your deathbed, what are you going to be wishing you had more of, money or time? Because almost everybody's probably going to say time. I wish I had more time with my kids. I wish I had more time with my wife. I wish I had more time to travel, whatever it is. You're always looking for more time. And what Hank Aaron was able to do was take his fame in baseball and everything that he accomplished and turn that into something positive to the point that so many people remembered him for being a good person, for passing on knowledge, for standing up for the right thing standing up for players that faced a lot of what he faced and still face that today so it's not as if it's gone and you know boston is actually notorious for that so many uh black or i should say non-white players have come out saying the things that they've heard at fenway park and it's unfortunate because we should be better than that we should strive to be better than that and that's what stood out to me about hank aaron is he did strive to be better than that to the point that people remember you for those things of being a good person, right? Like, sure, my job, I feel like I do a pretty decent job at it. You know, I've earned a lot and I feel as if I've made a good career for myself. But at the end of the day, when I'm dying, nobody's gonna remember me for that, right? Nobody's gonna be naming a building after me. Nobody's going to put up posters of me or statues of me because I'm just another person going through and doing the best job that I can but it's outside of those things in which I can make the biggest difference. And that's what I'm striving to do every day. And that's kind of been a theme for a lot of my episodes. A theme for, for this show is to try and be better, to do better. And I'm doing that every single day. And I have struggled. I'm currently struggling with, you know, being a good person at times because, hey, you know, not everybody's perfect. We always want to do the right thing by ourselves. We want to do the right thing by our friends and family. And eventually we are going to err. And that's why I've talked about trying to come to a place of sympathy and empathy for our fellow human being, because despite what people show you, sometimes they're going through so many things that you don't even know. And I think we are more likely to afford our close friends and our family the benefit of the doubt and hear them out. But a lot of times what we end up seeing of an individual the first time is the only thing that we know of them. And that's not necessarily the, their best foot. You know, just because our feelings tell us something or, or whatever, or our intuition, uh, it's not always the case. You can easily catch somebody on their worst moment or worst day. And unfortunately, that's, you know, your impression of them. But try and extend a little grace. Try and extend them a little bit of, um, you know, uh, courtesies of what they could be going through because you yourself are going to have moments uh, that you, you're going through things. You know, when you're trying to figure out how to best go about a situation or you're confused about how a situation is going to affect you or your family, think about what I said about Hank Aaron. You know, what do you want people to remember about you? Do you want people to remember that you are a badass at your job? Or do you want people to remember that you are a great human being who did great things for other people? That's what I ask myself. And I'm, you're not going to get it right every time. I can guarantee you that. But the more times that you think about it and the more times that you attempt to be the better person and try to help out somebody in the smallest, smallest of ways, the world's going to benefit from that. And you yourself will have a legacy, maybe not on the same place as Hank Aaron, because that's, you know, a, a platform that no, not really many people have. But within your small community, within your family, and you can have the legacy of somebody that everybody always appreciated for being a good person, I think at the end of your life you are doing a good thing and you've done the best that you can um, when you look yourself in the mirror before you know you're gone and that's what i thought about so so the family uh, and friends of hank aaron i extend my deepest condolences um you know i hope you're up there doing the same thing that you were doing down here teaching people everything you know about baseball and teaching people everything you know about standing up for human rights and that's what we should be doing 
So thank you again for tuning in. Uh, a little bit of a somber episode, but a little bit more, you know, about my childhood, my love of baseball and uh, baseball. I'll be back in a couple of months, so I'll definitely be looking forward to the start of a new season. It's always exciting because everybody starts zero and zero and you never know what your team's going to do until they show you what they're going to do. So I look forward to that. But, um, you know, I hope everybody's having a happy Monday and I'm looking forward to the next two episodes this week. But thank you for tuning in, old listeners and new uh, remember to connect with the show through email, through Instagram, through Twitter. Um, and I'm your host, Matty Ice, and I will see you down the road.